This week's video is sponsored by Vero. Well hello guys, hope you're doing okay. So today we've come to a place which is more local, come to a woodland and I, I've, I've investigated it this morning to see if there was any bluebells coming out and a few of them had started to come out but I think it's another week or two away yet before they're in the prime. So just come for a wander around really, see what we can find. And I've come down to a, a river section of this woodland just to kind of play with a few textures and patterns in the water see if I can get a couple of shots there just using the shapes because I haven't done this sort of photography for a while now so nice to get back into it and do a little bit of this more detail orientated shots just playing with different shutter speeds playing with the fact the lights above us here and we can kind of get different patterns and shapes in the water there so I'm gonna find something in this river see what I can find to work with and then get you to the back of the camera and kind of walk through walking through what I'm uh, what I'm shooting right guys so hopefully what you should see I'll press record on here now is that I've got this little square crop lined up and it's basically a close-up detail shot of some waterfalls just pouring into a little gully now I've got a bit of an issue where the Sun's right above us now and it's pouring lots of light down into it and the problem you have with the uh, water when you've got direct light on that water you get lots and lots of specular highlights and it's really quite hard to control. There's not so much cloud above us either so it's not even so much of a case of waiting for cloud to go in front of the sun and blanket off a bit. It's more a case of just kind of waiting for the best kind of opportunity you get. I'm underexposing by a couple of stops to kind of reduce that glare as much as possible. I've also got a polarizing filter on the front as well as a combined 8 stop um, ND as well to bring that shutter speed down a little more now camera's just switched off so give me a second I'll get that back up there we go so what you can see is it's that lower section just in that middle third down there that I'm having the real problem with where the water is actually frothing up as it hits the other water that's where I'm having the real problem with the specular highlights. So I'm underexposing by two stops and that's giving me about a sixth of a second at F16 ISO 100. Now, although I've got this square crop, I may not end up using this particular crop. I might actually go in a little bit closer, but because I'm using this Fuji GFX, I'm only, I've only got the 100 to 200 to play with. I'm limited how close I can get in so I'll kind of line this square crop up, but then I'll probably got punch in a little bit closer, a little bit tighter in post. I've got a bit of room to play with with that and it shouldn't be too much of an issue. I'm focusing just on the right hand side where you can see the dark section of the rock. And I'm just picking up the edge of that rock so I can catch focus there. And when the light's right, I just kind of grab the shot. I've been experimenting with a sixth of a second fourth of a second, quarter of a second, somewhere around there, see what works best. So I'll wait around for this light to kind of die down and settle itself down a little bit. And when it's about right, I'll grab the shot and pop it up for you.
So guys, I've just found another little image here. I'll just press record again so you can see what I'm looking at. There we go. So again, square crop again. And what I'm using is actually moss that's underwater attached to the rocks. has made really nice patterns underneath. You've got that water flowing over the top of it there, as you can see. I've got that focus point off to the middle right hand third there square crop again and as you can see I've got the water kind of flowing almost back on itself coming back in from that right hand side of the frame and it's just adding a little bit of interest to that bottom part that that side section of the frame sorry the green section underwater kind of almost goes in like an arrow shape and I really quite like it just thought there's an interesting pattern and shape um, I'm, I'm getting the right sort of shutter speed by using a polarizer and ND combined again and just kind of experimenting. What I'm really con concerned about on a bright day like this is I don't want any highlights in the water. I don't want it to overexpose and lose all detail. So if it's looking like it's going to do that, I just roll the exposure down and underexpose it. So I'll just grab this shot now. So guys, this is what I really love about Vero. As photographers, we really want to display our work how it was intended to be seen. So I want to be able to share with you a full panorama. I want to be able to share with you a full square crop. I want you to be able to share you that in full resolution. And Vero delivers on all of those things. And that's really important to me, to be able to display the work how I intended you to see it is so, so important. The other good thing about it is the fantastic community of people that are around it. I'm finding that people are engaging with the work, they're getting involved in the whole community, and that's just fantastic to see. And with that in mind, if you are already on Vero, I want you to drop your handles in the comments below so we can start engaging together. And I'm also gonna give you a little hashtag to use so we can start to share our work together. And that is hashtag woodland, water and wilderness. If you haven't already downloaded Vero, get online now and download it. And basically all I'm waiting for is, is again, because the light is quite right above us and quite harsh, I'm just waiting for the right time to take it. Let's check what that looks like now. Yeah, and that look, that's looking okay. It's looking quite nice at that. And again, just keep experimenting. It just goes to show, even on um, bright, days like this where you think the light's going to be way too harsh you can always find these little sort of vignettes that you can photograph while you're out there's no reason why you can't be out in these sort of conditions you don't need to waste the day you can be out you can find these little things to photograph take your time and just work on ways round to get the right exposure there's always a way around it even if it's it's looking like it's almost impossible you'll work out a way to be able to photograph it and make something nice and something interesting out of it. And these kind of shots, I think, are some of the most unique you can get because it's, it's making you work harder for a shot. Right guys, so we've just moved downstream a little bit and I've found another little square crop that I quite like. Seems to be the theme of the day. There's lots of square crops today, but they work really well for these kind of detail shots that I'm seeing. Now, just below me here, there's a lovely little sort of cascade coming off, but I've got an issue and I'll point out in a second. As you can see, hang on, I'll just press record on the back of here so you can see, that would help. There we go. 
So as you can see now, I've got this cascade running through almost like diagonally right across from corner to corner. And I've got the S curve running through. There's like an S curve and a little bit that sticks out and then it doubles back on itself underneath the water. And I'm focused on that point that just sticks out there in that sort of middle third section. But as you can maybe see, what's happening is the position of the sun is right above us to the right hand side here and it's casting a shadow of one of these trees here into the water and it's quite distracting in the frame so I'm getting a, a really nice pattern in the water by hitting a shutter speed of about a quarter of a second somewhere around there and as soon as I take that shot you've got this dark sort of shadow right away across that so what I'm having to do is actually wait for the position of the sun to move and the further it gets round to the right here, it's going to push that shadow further over that way and hopefully get it out of the position of the water so that I get a nice clean shot and there's no distracting element in that water. Obviously the same as before, I'm underexposing it slightly just so I don't blow out any of those highlights in the water. But as I say, it's just a case of uh, waiting this out until this shadow moves out of the frame because I really don't want that that in there because it's really distracting so hopefully by the time that sun moved position and moved round I'll grab the shot and this is how it turned out Now on the way back to the van there, I saw another shot, but it was kind of down a steep bank and it was of the wood sorrel that are up covering these woods. I isolated one of those wood sorrel flowers, centralized it in the frame, another square crop, because obviously the theme of today is square crops. Um, and yeah, just isolated that. And it just goes to show that even in these harsh conditions that we face today, and it's been bright blue skies, bright, you know bright sunshine still managed to grab shots and it's all just about looking for the smaller details and using that light to your advantage obviously you may have to wait around for shadows and what have you to move out of the way but if you give it enough time to kind of find these little scenes and isolate them and work on them i think you'll still be able to come away with some shots that are worth keeping well guys hope you've enjoyed today's video like and subscribe if you have and I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.